Okay, this is going to walk you through how to finish up the double replacement and precipitates lab, uh, the calculations. This is going to be an example. This is not really the data that you took. So you're going to use this as a map, sort of. Imagine that you did this combination, though. Imagine this was a little corner of your data table. You would have taken this and you would have put the plastic sheet over it and you would have put a drop of sodium carbonate here, aqueous, so nice and clear. And this is not sodium carbonate, I'm cheating. I'm using your, your chemicals, okay? And then you would have put a drop of magnesium nitrate on top of it, hopefully not cross-contaminating at the same time. And you're only concerned with the reactions that happened. You're only concerned with the places where precipitates actually formed. So check it out. There's a white solid there. So this reaction I care about. Other reactions I don't care about. Ones that are still clear were not actually reactions. We just mixed a bunch of ions. None of them bonded together. But only when you had a white solid did a reaction actually happen because a new bond was formed. Remember, <clears throat> if it could dissolve, it would dissolve. So if you can see the solid, it's insoluble. So keep that in mind. So in this example, this box would be one that I care about, and I would number it. So I'm just going to call this 1. And all the other boxes where reactions happened would also have numbers. And then I would put some observations in here, because this is a data table. A white precipitate formed white and cloudy, however you want to describe it. Okay, good descriptions, good data. Okay, calculation one says to take the boxes where things happened and to list the possible products. Okay? And I would label it one for box one. Okay? Now, sodium carbonate was a reactant. Magnesium nitrate was a reactant. Your possible products are sodium nitrate, so you take the positive of the first compound, put it with the negative of the other, or your other possible product is magnesium carbonate. And when you put them together, do pay attention to those charges, make sure the charges cancel out. Okay, so for question one, in box one, my possible products are Na, NO3, the guys that I did in blue, and that's a plus one, that's a minus one, so they come together nicely. And then I put a comma, and then I'm going to put the magnesium with the carbonate, put the positive ion first, and notice the charges. So he's a positive two, he's a negative two, so these guys also come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. That's really nice. Mg CO3. So that's the answer to question one, or calculation one. What are my possible products. Those are my possible products. And I would do that for the other boxes as well. Okay. Question two says rewrite the pairs, but cross out any compound that would be soluble according to table F. Remember, this precipitate is a solid. He's insoluble. So if I'm trying to figure out who that precipitate is, I need someone who's insoluble. If I cross out anyone that's soluble, I'll have this figured out. Okay, see the Na? See the NO3? Those guys are involved in our very first couple of rules on table F. Na is a group one ion. He is soluble no matter what. Here's nitrate. Not that I need this rule, but there is a nitrate rule. He's soluble no matter what either one of these would have gotten me the information that sodium nitrate is soluble. So, sodium nitrate is not the precipitate because he's soluble, he's dissolved, you can't see him. It must be that magnesium carbonate, the other guy, he must be the precipitate, the white solid. Okay, and you do that for your other pairs as well. Okay, question three, you're going to write the fully balanced reactions. Okay, 
It describes how to do a double replacement reactions with all the labels and everything. So I'm just going to do it for this one. Okay, in box one, the full reaction here is your reactants are this guy and this guy. But I need to cross the charges. So when I put the magnesium and nitrate together, notice the two would cross down and be outside here. So one of my reactants is MgNO32. And he was clear. Before they came together, he was nice and clear, so he's aqueous. A Q. Plus, here's my other reactant, these guys. See the plus one, see the minus two, cross them down. Na2 CO3. And he was also clear before the reaction. He was nice and clear, so he was aqueous. Okay. My two possible products are these guys who I've already figured out. I figured out that the sodium nitrate was soluble. So he's going to be aqueous. And by process of elimination, or from using table F, he is insoluble, so he is the solid. Mg, CO3, S for solid. I got one more little thing I got to do. I got to balance this. See how I have two sodiums here? Two sodiums before the reaction. I need two sodiums after the reaction. I put a big two in front. That also fixes the nitrates. See the nitrates with the two outside the parentheses? If I start the reaction with two nitrates, I also need to end with two nitrates. I think everything else is balanced. One magnesium on each side, one carbonate on each side. All of that, every formula must be right. Every label must be either aqueous or S for solid. Okay, S does not mean soluble here, it means solid. He is the insoluble precipitate, the solid guy. If he could dissolve, he would dissolve, so he must be insoluble. And you do that for every reaction that happens, you should have four of them. Okay, question four says, I think to write a net ionic equation. There's an example in the front of your lab, um, and on the example you'll see that only the ions that form the precipitate go into the net ionic equation. These guys, see the sodium and the nitrate, how they're aqueous? Before the reaction they were aqueous, after the reaction they're aqueous, they're not really doing anything. They are what we call spectator ions. They don't play in the game. They just hang out on the sidelines and watch the reaction. They're floating in the water. It looks like we made them bond together here, but we didn't because they're aqueous. In reality, they're floating around in the water separately. Only the magnesium and the carbonate bonded together. So only they are going to be in the net ionic equation, net being like some total of what's really happening. Okay, before the reaction, the magnesium was aqueous. But if I write him alone, without the nitrate, I need to give his charge back to him. When ions float around in water by themselves, they have their charge with them. If they're metals, they have lost electrons. If they're nonmetals, they have gained them. Okay? The carbonate is also in the precipitate. CO3 aqueous, and he needs his negative 2 charge and then put them together in the precipitate. S for solid. If this weren't a one-to-one -one ratio, if it were a two-to-one ratio, I would need to put a, maybe a two here. You would need to make sure it's balanced. Okay, in this case, it works out nicely because they're in a two-to-two -two ratio, so it reduces to a one-to-one -one ratio. And there you go, that is your precipitate. This is the only bond that forms. It looks like a lot is happening in a double replacement reaction, but it looks like a lot of bonds are breaking and a lot of bonds are forming. That is not true, because if they're starting out dissolved, these guys aren't really together. If they're starting out dissolved, these guys aren't really together. All that happens is they're all floating around, and the magnesium and the carbonate find each other, bond together, sink to the bottom. Everyone else, the sodium and the nitrate, 
just float there. Okay.